Hello. Um, who of you went to school? <laughs> That's a quite a big coverage. Um, I run a project called Project Dream School, and I'm not going to tell a lot about it. How is that? Um, what I'm going to talk about, and see if my clicker works. Click. Oh, that's my time. Um, I think it's a good confession to make, actually, that I'm a college dropout. It's um, fun to be at a university and to <laughs> really say that. I think I also like the talk of Tim. He's actually like a dropout within school already. And the, uh, <laughs> I think that's a kind of a big achievement to have. Um, but on top of that, I'm a designer. And uh, one thing that you do as a designer, or three things that you do as a designer, is uh, thinking about things not yet imagined. I think that's the most beautiful thing. We always want to do that. Uh, make unique links between things, and I think on top of that is rethink things that have already been thought of by other people as well. So you might think uh, uh, um, <laughs> that that's cool, but why schools? And I think a good thing of designers, I think also having designers as friends is fun because you always have those ideas, right? Even if you don't ask them to have ideas, they always have ideas for you. It's really annoying at some point, ask my girlfriend. <laughs> so why schools? Um, I had to do a talk about a technology and uh, young people in the north of the Netherlands. And uh, my ride over there was a guy named Peter, and he then afterwards told me he was building a school. And I said, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I have ideas on schools. Can I help you with that? And he said yes. But the, the, I think the most important reason for me is that I have two kids, and we found out in that car drive, that, or in the car ride that we had together, that they also had two kids in the same age. So these are my two kids. So actually doing a project for schools is a really selfish reason, but I think having a selfish reason is a really important force behind the project you have. Um, because the actual school we were, we were helping is going to be realized in the next two and a half years, and, the, um, and they will attend that school. So I can think about... <laughs> I'm worrying. Um, I, can, I can think about schools as a theoretical kind of idea, but I'd rather think about schools of what it can actually be. And then the good thing to know about this particular project, it's about a school from 12 to 18-year-old people um, from uh, basically, uh, uh, um, um, I don't know how to pronounce it in English, but uh, people that can only work to like the higher educated pre-university kind of schooling. It's existing, is 3,000 3, students, 300 people, uh, staff, and um, uh, we try to prepare students for um, the next uh, uh, phase in their lives. So, what we encounter is a thing called the dream gap. And the dream gap is basically a simple notion. I will try to explain it to you really briefly. I'm also in time pressure, as you already. But once you get born, and at 22, <laughs> you're graduated, right? A simple, really, principle. And um, <laughs> when you get born, you have all the potential in the world. You can learn any kind of language, and you can be whatever you want to be. But then life happens, right? And you have all the choices that are made for you, and at the end, you have a diploma. So your parents make choices for you when you go to your primary school, uh, the place where you were born always uh, also make a decision for you. And if you go to your uh, secondary school, it depends on where you live, etc. And all those choices on your fucker pocket or the, 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 the class you want to follow influence what you have you want to go to do. So being a designer, there's a word for that. You have a waterfall, right? So you make decisions with post-its hanging on a wall. At the end, you have a final result. And I think in education, you have something similar, that all the choices that you make at the end make that you only have one choice left. And for the one thing that you've become, an industrial designer, you're not everything else anymore, right? That's what we call the gap. And what we try to do within Dream School is try to come up with ways to close dream gaps. So whatever you want to be and what schools have to offer. And we're not, um, we don't hate schools, um, even though I'm a dropout. I think schools are really valuable and places to meet people. But there are ways to complement schools in ways to uh, do it even better. And it might be by letting the outside in earlier. So instead of having a waterfall, it could be more like agile. So you have an idea, see if it works. Um, so a first idea, uh, VAT. Well, we call it Beethoven here, but um, it stands for Value Added Tax. I and mean, the two words are nice, right? It's adding value. That's what we're here for as designers as well. But tax we don't like. So, and then you can see tax as a mandatory kind of crowdfunding. <laughs> 
right? It's a new notion of thinking about text. And, uh, uh, but if you just change one letter into uh, in an S, you can have a value added to schools idea, like in a choice I can make, I want to add something to. So to help you a little bit, based on the tech system here in the Netherlands, you can have a 6% scenario, then you can have a 90% scenario. And the idea would be, if you have a 6% of all the things that you do, and you donate it into like a fund, and you uh, add all the money up, and at the end, or, or you give 90% of your time to a school, can be a nearby school in your surrounding, you can help a school getting better by getting the outside in and having actual applications. And those 6% you all add up, and once a year you, you make a big party, invite all parents, kids, teacher, teachers, and uh, uh, companies, and just have a lot of fun. It's good for community as well. NDAs, big enemies of designers and all kind of creative people, non-disclosure agreements, which actually say that within a project you cannot disclose anything that you come up with. Well, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> Most of the times, creative ideas already, you had them, also within the project already that you had before maybe, another assignment, uh, but you, you, you put in signature anyway because you want to work for big clients as well. And we can change that as well, because it's easier to say to uh, well, people like me, who work for a lot of companies, what I cannot tell is more work than sharing to me what I can tell with other people. So I would like to propose the following. Let's come up with disclosure agreements. I think they can only be one page <laughs> instead of like 80 pages, what I cannot do. It's more difficult to come up with all the things that I cannot do. And do disclose agreements would mean that Within a project, I could say anything on any project with anybody I want to, as long as, for instance, it's not really infringing with company rights or intellectual stuff, whatever. So, a thing to consider when you do a next project. Another idea, intern shops. Um, if you look at what's happening, churches in the Netherlands, for instance, in Friesland, we have 770 churches, and a lot of them become empty in the next coming five years. I think 500 of them become empty. They don't get repurposed, so they break them down. So that does a lot for our landscape as we have it here. Uh, but the same goes for offices. With 34% of the offices in the Netherlands is empty. That's a lot of office space not being used. Same, uh, same work for shops. So why not use spaces in the middle of society to bring kids in to try out stuff? So actually try a shop, see if it works. And then create a place or an environment for playful learning instead and get payful earning at the end, right? Um, pay it forward. There's also a movie, and the movie is, I think, really nice. It's based on the principle, I share something with you if you share something with somebody else. That's the idea. But if you make a business model out of it, could it work uh, in order to get people to work together? So... Imagine you're a startup and you have a need for a design of anything at all, but you always want to have 100%. You only have one chance to make a good impression, right? So you go out into the world and you have your that perfect business card or whatever, but you don't want it to be 70% because, well, there's a lot of competition as well there. Um, and your money is always low. That's the situation. So imagine if you were collaborate together with students for instance they want to have actual cases to show because if you want to go out into the world later people want to, want you to have experience so why not cuddle up work together because when the companies build up the need is still there it's even more it's 100 percent because there's competition and the company uh, also has uh, lives in its world money is high obviously money is being earned otherwise it wouldn't be there anymore and then you just pay back the price maybe you uh, 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 negotiated when you started it. But meanwhile, building up actual experience of, of building up portfolio or building network, and I think that's crucial to have as well, being a student today. Um, flex work. Sometimes you have projects that really require a specific skill set of people, and you have a short time span and also a tight budget. Well, then you really need specialists because you need to think and act fast. I think that's so that then we flew a fly in all the, all the specialists to do that. But sometimes you have the same budget, but you have more time. So why not mix it with students, right? So we have one specialist, we add some students to it, and if Within that model, we would donate a little bit, <laughs> um, as uh, um, uh, the previous idea, to a fund. At the end of the year, we can have a good meal somewhere with a client, a student, and professionals, and have fun along the way. Um, sixth idea, yeah. get rid of business cards. Why? I think you consist of more than your LinkedIn profile. Uh, next to your LinkedIn, I think the perfect profile which you have is your Facebook, together with your 
Um, on the other hand, LinkedIn. And I think what you do on Twitter is basically mixing both of those worlds. Your Twitter at work, what you do at work, and you also share what you do with your friends. So I think it would be a good idea to mix those things. So don't use business cards because it's not saying who you are, it's saying what you are. Seventh idea, um, start conversations. I happen to have been working on beautiful projects by meeting people in trains I just bumped into. I met a guy, I work on schools now, right? It's Peter. Um, and a fun way of doing that, was also mentioned in the talk before, is just, if you get a business card today, um, don't look at it, but if, if you bump into somebody new, give that card to somebody else. And they have the most funny conversations when they meet. They call each other up, don't know each other, have a coffee, and you make some new tribes or whatever the talk was talked about. <laughs> Um, CSR, I also have to speed up. <laughs> um, the good thing of CSR is that uh, we used to think about CSR of we have to have change all the light bulbs, and I think that's not relevant anymore. But I think if you put evolution to CSR, you get a CSR revolution, and it reads better. And I think if you now look at companies, how they operate, they, they, they really want people to evolve and to... Uh, 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 um, to develop more, to add to companies as well. And last week we celebrated, or not really, we, th we now think it's bad for the environment as well, but uh, we have 7 billion people, and that's a lot of people in the world. And if you actually want to make a change, we have to look at the beginning. I think schools are the crucial place to look at. If you actually want to change things, change at the beginning, and don't try to change people who already don't want to change anymore. And this is a, a, the former CEO of Shell who once said, uh, I saw him in an interview and he said, okay, we have to change from human resources to human development because we're not, and I don't really know if it's his proper quote, but this was the essence of his, what he was saying. We cannot, we are not resources you have on a shelf, you click it in and if it works, and if somebody doesn't work, you just replace them. It's not like that. Lastly, Ted, I would propose to redesign Ted as well. And I did, being a designer. Um, and this is how it looks like after design. It's still the same thing. And why? I think if we take the TED as a notion and we, we rethink what TED could stand for, it's not technology, ed, entertainment, and design anymore. I think that's too narrow. But it can be an educational platform where we educate people into being T-shaped, deep knowledge, and stretching our hands out. And if we do all do that, we can make a chain and make cool things together. So next time, look to the person next to you, <laughs> look them in the eyes, have a coffee, and build bold plans, and go to schools and share them. Thank you. <laughs>